The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Back with you, it's Hour 2. It's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbel. The news is good for Nebraska Dylan Riola is in more postings on Instagram, more postings on Twitter, made his announcement with a poem and uh, has talked with Pete Thabel of ESPN.com. So we shall see uh, what uh, your mood continues to be. 489-1240, 489-1240 if you want to get in. Uh, we are efforting Coach McBride. We'll see if that happens or not, but... For now, happy to take your reaction as a Nebraska fan with the news. You get a five-star quarterback, you get a legacy, you get a guy that could change the program around. How you feeling? Uh, can join us and share your thoughts, 489-1240 or 800 825 We'll get to your comments in the stream as well. Several hundred of you joining us online, Hail Varsity YouTube channel. I have I have made the adjustment in honor of Dylan Riola, not one but two cough drops. Thanks to Elijah Herbal coming to the rescue. Thought I had a bunch of them stashed in my bag. I do not. But this from Dylan Riola and um, his comments to Pete Thamel. Uh, and uh, here is how it went down on the phone interview and some quotes from Riola with Thamel. And uh, in the phone interview Monday, Riola detailed how a lifetime of being intertwined with Nebraska football played into his decision. His father, Dominic, an All-American offensive lineman there, his uncle Donovan, the school's offensive line coach, quote from Dylan. I firmly believe that Nebraska is in my blood. It's a great opportunity to be part of something bigger than myself. Nebraska is a special place. So Nebraska marks the third school for Riola. For Riola. He's been tied to in recruitment, committed to Ohio State, decommitted, then chose Georgia, and, uh, and then flipped. Uh, Monday, you also had the news of Carson Beck. We kind of detailed that. The 12 and one starter for Georgia will return for 2024. Uh, Riola said there's uh, a lure to potentially restoring glory to the Cornhuskers amid the program's seven year bull drought, spanning three head coaches. Nebraska's history includes five titles and three Heisman winners. More from Dylan. Quote, I just think it mean, it'll mean a lot to bring it back just because of a legacy of so many great players that have walked through that locker room that's been established there to keep doing what they established. Just the history in Nebraska football, the program, it's not just another program. And uh, more from Dylan here, I believe my dad being there. I understand the history of the program. I also understand my family legacy there and the fan base and aspirations. I strongly believe in the vision and culture that Coach Rule has established with his staff. I went there with an open mind. I think it was just another opportunity to be around the whole staff and understand really Coach Rule's vision and culture and what he intends for Nebraska to be. He understands that himself. That's huge. He can implement that into his coaching style and the way he interacts with players. And he says, look, I noticed that the way his players gravitate towards him. He really cares about the person and the man you're becoming. He uses football, that platform, to help develop you as a man. That's what makes him the most special. He gets the most out of him because he's built such strong relationships. So that is some of the comments and some of the quotes from Dylan Riola to Pete Thamel on the why. And, you know, the way when this we're talking a week's worth of coverage of this. Back to last Monday, 
to now. And Nebraska is able to pull the flip off, which is great. But there's a lot more to it than smooth talking or just being persistent to to get a yes instead of a, a maybe. Nebraska, Matt Rule, this staff, kudos to you. Donnie, kudos to you. And kudos to the Riolas for having an open mind. I'm not saying it's the easy take, but to, to be able to choose between Ohio State and Georgia, where they at are at in the college football world, in the landscape they're in. I mean, I know they're not playoff teams this year, but they are about every other year. Rael is taking a challenge on to make Nebraska a playoff team soon. And he's doing it because Matt Rule was not just words. Matt Rule, over his first 12 months on the job, backed up his words from his, f- oh, his first press conference to his first contact with Dylan Riola. He backed it up with actions all the way through. And, and that's what the, the selling point was here. It's that trust factor, as we talked about last week with, with Bill and as Damon told me on Heard at Sports Radio last week. It's about trust. Dylan and the whole Riola family really felt that trust factor with Nebraska. And once they were able to trust what Nebraska was quote-unquote selling them. I don't think it was a sell, but you get what I'm saying. Right, what he's pitching. It was about coming back home. And, and they, they feel that this place is home for them. And, and I think that's evidenced. Go back to the first time we ever heard the name Dylan Riley Schmidt, you mm-hmm. and me. It was after a, a, a summer camp in Nebraska. And, man, who's this kid making all the throws? Who's got this kid? Riola. Oh, Dom's son? That was him as a 15 No, I know. And, and an incoming freshman in high school. We're all expecting Dom or, or Dylan to be this psycho offensive lineman. And I mean that lovingly, all right? But that's the, that's the thought. And you go back to Mitch's story with this on the Average Joe podcast about how, you know, John Kitten is like, no, dude, your, your kid can throw. <laughs> uh, you might have something here, and, and away you go. 489 1240 I mean, open phones here this hour if we don't run down Coach McBride, but, but still open for the majority. But your reaction as a Nebraska fan, I mean, what, what are your expectations of, of, of Dylan and Nebraska? And I think he can come in and do good work as a freshman. It's not out of the ordinary for freshmen to win a job or get an opportunity. I think what Nebraska is also going to have, Elijah, is some – some insurance. What I mean by insurance is familiar face. Familiar face. Mentorship. Mentorship. Your your insurance is going to be Casey Thompson. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I think this is the the plan for Casey, or it could be the plan for Casey. I think Casey uh, is, is well. He's back in town first and foremost, uh, and and I think he has a chance to to be a walk on with some nil love. And if he wins the job, okay. I don't think that's what everyone's thinking right now. But he's he's an option. He is a veteran option. You want a veteran option in that quarterback room in case there's injury, in case there's indecision, in case there when I mean by indecision, you just you gotta be ready as a freshman. And and Nebraska's gotta get him ready. That's the coach's job. So but I think Casey Thompson's going to be a part of this discussion point. You've got Danny Kalen, which is great. You've got Dylan Riola, Dylan Riola right now. And who knows what happens with Harburg or, or Chubba. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be nice if Chubba would stick, but I don't know that that's a reality or not. And if you're if you're Harburg, I mean, you, you look really good as an H-back. You could always go back to doing that and be – an emergency option. Who's on the line with us? Eric on the line. Eric, thanks for hanging in. Go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call. Great day for Nebraska sports, but you know you can't can't argue with that. And I think this is going to be, in my opinion, it's going to also spread to other sports. I think it's just going to get some momentum going for the whole uh, sports program. I'm hoping that's the case anyway. And uh, I hope we can put to bed some of the naysayers about Matt Rule. I love the guy. He's doing a fantastic job, and as well as the rest of the staff. I I think we're heading in the right direction for sure. Hey, thank you so much, Eric, for the phone call. Appreciate you tuning in. 489-1240, open phones this hour. You want to jump in. And he talks about momentum. Right, and this is, you still got to get it on the field, but you you can start that momentum on field with off-field acquisitions. 
And let's let's be clear here. Momentum on the field is important, but it's not Wednesday yet. No. It's not Wednesday yet. And this is having national ripple effects mm-hmm. through college football, the Riola flip. It's, it's been expected to be coming, but the week isn't over yet. I'm not guaranteeing you surprises on Wednesday. I wouldn't go that far. But this Husker coaching staff is, is doing what they can. The, uh, the quote I saw on Twitter earlier, I can't remember which recruiting staffer it was, but they put it up on Twitter, full court press. Mm-hmm. That's what Nebraska's at right now with, with this, this cycle. You still got, what, 36 hours until signing day? You do. You got phones to bang. Uh, you have uh, FaceTimes to have. Actually, is there a dead period? Going on? Am I going to? Well, it doesn't matter anymore. There's electronic communication. Uh, so Scott says this uh, should make Michael Wilbon choke on it. <laughs> Long memories. I love it. I love it. No, Nebraska needed this type of shot in the arm at the premier position in college football to give them uh, a chance moving forward. It's a lot to ask of a true freshman, but he's a. He's a, he's a different kind. He's of a true different freshman. kind of true freshman with a five star. Who's with us? Aaron. Aaron, thanks for calling. Aaron, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you to Trev and Matt Rule. Uh, heard a lot of rumors about all the hard work they're putting in, and uh, I think Wyoming is an example of what the staff is doing and the work they're putting in, and the future that we have ahead. Go Big Red. Aaron, thanks for the phone call, 489-1240 or 800-825-5865. Patrick uh, is seconding that he is taking Wednesday off. (laughs) Could be a a new national holiday. It is for some, but uh, maybe what Brett says, program changing. And there's so many good things going on. You have the momentum, and Nebraska, I know, didn't get bowl eligible this year. But can Nebraska get a guy like Wingo? Can they make a few more moves in the class? They did a good job of getting bricks, uh, the the tackle from Iowa. Uh, You have done marvelous work with in-state talent as you were able to lock up so many good in-state kids. And you kept Kalen. Chopper 76, and we are behind in our comments, so we will get those and roll throw through these comments on the stream. Hail Varsity YouTube where you can watch the show. Uh, Chopper 76, holy crap balls. I don't believe, it, I didn't believe it would really happen. Oh, it has happened as Dylan Riola is in for Nebraska. Who's with us? John is online. John, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Uh, I just heard you say Dylan Riola is in. Are you sure? I'm positive. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking of Bubba Starling. Remember that guy? Yeah, I did. Now, um, was he going to go play baseball or was he going to play football? And kind of everybody knew that he was being we were, we were being used so that he could get a good deal. This is not so, a similar situation at all. Yeah, John, I don't think you – yeah, are you are you here to uh, – I, I understand the Husker PTSD you have. Relieve yourself or are you are you excited at all? Or are you just worried about, oh, no, what can go wrong with this? Yeah, what can go wrong? It, it, the Husker PTSD, I understand that, but the commitment is there. P- pin has been put to paper from what I have heard. It's a done deal. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks for listening. Now the question becomes, what can he do on the field? Dude, uh, how many how many Nebraska fans are? It's the Husker PTSD. I, I get it. You laid it out earlier. 23 years since the national championship. I, I understand A lot that. of Husker fans out there don't believe good things can happen to this football program. I, I know. But, and I know the last four games of the re- of the regular season, the way those things went down, it's, it's more, more torture. But... Seriously, even your most ardent naysayer of, of, of air quote, nice things, enjoy this if you're a Nebraska fan. This, Take the off-season, off-field win at this level, right? I mean, it, it programs, there's five of them, maybe four, that print five stars or high four stars that come in and play. And, and Nebraska's not been one of them mm-hmm. for a lot of years because of their, their offense being the option offense. But now you're you're in an era where it, it's going to be pound the football, play action, and have a guy that can slice up some, some teams uh, with his arm. And I don't mean to be dramatic here, but the Great Plains region 
has been devoid of a college football power for about as long as Nebraska has been down on their luck. Aside There's, from Ohio State, I don't consider Ohio State Great Plains. That's that's Midwest. Okay, there's a difference. I, I'm, I'm so talking, you're saying okay, so not Northern school. You're going. I'm you're going, going the Midwest. True Great Plains region. It's been devoid of a power. Maybe you could argue Oklahoma. They're a little south to me. Mm-hmm. The Great Plains region. This is the first step in the process of Nebraska reclaiming their spot as a Great Plains power. There's a lot. There's a lot that needs to be done to reach that point. But you think about the 500-mile radius of Nebraska, we've talked about it a lot. There's plenty of talent around here, and you supplement it with talent from across the country. Nebraska's gotten their first real talent from across the country. They have to capitalize on it. They have to make something of Dylan Royal. They have to use that development, and they have to make sure it translates to the field. But if you can do that, there's no reason more five-stars won't be coming to Nebraska. If you can show them, you know what, Nebraska's a place where we'll take you, develop you, you will win games here, and you will go to the NFL. This is the first step towards rebuilding Nebraska to that to that that mountaintop that so many Husker fans want to see. And I don't well, want to be dramatic here, but that's the kind of magnitude that this commitment and this signing has on the program. It opens the door for it. Yes. I mean, instead of a hard sell or having to lure somebody of that ilk here, you can do both. You can you can develop and you can get the high-end talent and, uh, and, and mix together and that's what Alabama and Clemson and LSU have been doing for years as they get the high-end talent along with the development. More of your thoughts coming up at 489-1240. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. So I got to love fake Will Bolt on Twitter. He is reacting to John's phone call. What's next? Is the next caller going to compare this to Harrison Beck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to blame John. I understand the Husker PTSD that you've gone through. I understand that. You know what, though? But there's it's, a different it's, managed it's, charge. It's, yeah, it's different. You have different management. You've got different management. You've got vision. You've got a plan. And you saw this team, despite a billion injuries, and I know a lot of you weren't happy with the the way the games ended, but presumably you're you're not going to be trailing. Uh, and if you are, you may have a, a better shot at, at finishing out with the two-minute situation. And, and quarterback quarterback coach is key. Uh, earlier caller touched on that. Uh, and also that's been a, a question mark here in the um, the stream. We'll get more of your comments here and your phone calls as well. But I think Nebraska is going to put this together right. They did their job keeping the door open with, with the Riolas. They did their job with the visit this weekend. And it's it's been about authenticity for Nebraska. I think the the Riola family got to see that the last year, and they felt pretty good about it. Clearly, as he committed earlier. And what is this but the first big win of the Matt Rule era? We thought that the first big win of the Matt Rule era was going to be a Husker bowl game this season. I think Nebraska fans would trade a bowl game for Dylan. First Riola. big this win is, is hiring Tony White. This is bigger. Well, eh, listen, unproven. And let's get the kid to campus and let him get comfortable and let him run the offense. But what you have now is a winning defense. Yeah, you have a with, a, with a lot of the, the talent back. And one of the things I think we should get into this hour before we get to the phone lines again is the fact that I talked about the long term, mm-hmm. what this can mean for Nebraska in the long term. In the short term, it's been talked about a lot. It's a four or five year rebuild for Matt Rule. Not anymore. Well, not anymore. He's on to year it, two. It, it might not be a two year rebuild, but three in terms mm-hmm. of being able to compete nationally in the, the scheme of college football. That's the kind of commitment Nebraska has got from Dylan Rowe. It's a guy that can put you back on the national map of college football. I don't want to say single-handedly. He needs some help, but that's the type of talent get your that wins. he is. Get your wins. Uh, you ease in with this early schedule, and then you have the freight train that is mid-October through the end of November with the schedule, the new Big Ten. You're going to have a, a, a gunfighter uh, that's quite capable of, on the offensive side. Husker Russ joins us. Husker Russ, thanks for calling. Thanks for taking my call, Schmidt. Um, I'm 55 years old. I spent the last 10 years working up in the East Stadium as a fan host. I've seen all the ups and downs. And in my life, I, one thing I've noticed, and some people are, unhap- are not happy unless they're unhappy. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's time that we put the past in the past, okay? There's a reason some kids don't come here is because they see all the negativity of all the fans here that are whining all the time. And, uh, you know, it's time to sack up and 
let's get behind this thing. I've been trying to tell people, Matt Rule is the man. Um, he's he's a not only a good football coach, but he's a good person to raise these young men and to make them be better. And if you look across the landscape of college football, most guys, Jim Harbaugh, all they care about is winning. And, yeah, we want to win, but we want to win the right way here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And um, I've seen it. And uh, this reminds me of Tom Osborne staying with my favorite and the UNL quarterback of all time, Turner Gill. Um, he didn't win any natties, but he was a great guy, and he was a great player and a great person. And I think it's time that everybody just let's do the positivity. Mm-hmm. Let's get behind the program. Guys are putting in the work. Rule is putting in the work. The other guys are putting in the work. They're doing what they can to bring this thing back. And we all need to get in this together and quit wintering this thing and figuring out how it's going to go wrong and what's, you know, this could be this or be that. This is the kid that's going to bring other good players, higher level players here and give us a chance to be relevant again. So, R- Russ, I think you're on point. I think you're echoing a, a lot of. What you have felt, and and many Nebraska fans have felt for the years, you got the right guy at the helm, and it's going to take the work that gets put in. And I totally agree with you that Nebraska is putting the work in. And you got to have some special guys, too. And and you just got a special guy to have that opportunity at quarterback. And it's through the work that the staff put in. And you know what? I think it's it's great to celebrate and and think what can be. Mm If you're a Nebraska right. fan, versus right. versus can what we just, what can has we been, be happy for three days. Can we be happy around here and not find something wrong with it, or just oh, what's going to happen? I mean, can we all just be positive for once and say, let's go big red? Yeah, let's, 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 let's become. Not I mean, so- no, I mean, this is the contrast, uh, Russ. Your your phone call compared to to John's phone call. I mean. John's like, oh, God, how's this going to go wrong? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, we don't have a crystal ball, but I think you've, you've kind of put the, the nail in the head together with the, uh, the positive attributes, and it's, it's okay to, to hope and, and to have some hope that it's going to be different. Russ, thank you for listening, man. Appreciate your phone call. Uh, well said. 489-1240 or 800 825 Five eight six five. Elijah is going to take some more of your calls. We'll get to more of your stream comments here. As Tim checks in and says, "Getting Riola and the rest of the star-studded class coming in is huge, but it'll also be gigantic that we're able to hold on to Tony White." And uh, totally agree there. If you're on hold, stay there. We'll get to your phone calls in a moment. Who's with us? John's on the line. Uh, same, different, different John, different John, John, thanks for calling. Yeah, I got it. You've answered all my questions, except how much is this going to cost us to bring the quarterback in here? I have no earthly idea. I mean, I, you, okay. Matt Rule laid out for you a, a, a really good quarterbacks between one and $2 million. And, and one other thing, uh, that other gentleman, I try to be positive. Was it okay? you? <laughs> no, no, I, I try to be positive. Okay, I'm 79, but I've been waiting 20 years and hearing all this, and I can understand why a lot of the old timers are a little bit gun shy right now. That that this is going to work out, and if and if all the regents and the sports people would have been more looking at what was going on, maybe we could have put the skids on this. 10 years ago. That's the only thing I have to say. And John, have a good day. You too, bud. Thanks for the phone call. 489-1240. 489-1240 to get in. So that was that was not previous, John. And one quick thing to note here is you do go check Twitter. And as we talked about, well, what's next? What will happen the next 36 hours? Omar Hales has tweeted, we ain't done yet. Okay. So Omar checking in. Omar said, ain't done yet. You've got a five-star in, in Wingo that's out there at receiver. Uh, you, you had a couple of kids in uh, that, you know, were uh, were interested here. A couple of linebackers, one that's an Oregon commit. 
and uh, one that is, I mean, Richie Incognito is uh, is tweeting out the video from Dan Orlowski. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. We got Richie. We, we got a not my Richie. Uh, <laughs> Wow, okay. No, I, I love Richie. Let's it, get Richie back to Memorial. I honestly. love Richie. Richie and Garth used to hang out a lot. Really? Yeah. Richie's, Richie was always good stuff. Richie was always a good dude to me. Uh, first interview I ever did was Richie Incognito. Wow. Yeah. You go back to the phone lines here, though, Shmitty. Yes. Where enough, another enough John history. waits. John number three. John, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Yeah, guys. I just wanted to point out that when Rule first got hired, what did me and probably 80% of the fan base think his first mistake was, was keeping Raiola. We all just need to chill. Uh, we're an abused fan base. <laughs> it's been rough. But uh, no, man, I, I think this is fantastic news for everybody. And I just want to make that comment. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, they were like, dude, what's he doing with Donnie? What's he doing? With... He was not BSing you when he said that it was a, a same philosophy on how you do the offensive line. Imagine... Imagine this: play an offensive lineman when they're ready. Mm. Just imagine that. At least Donnie's had two years with the same group, right, to get some on-the-job training. And look at the kids that have been able to to work under him that came in. Of course, Teddy, right, and uh, at uh, at left guard once uh, once Piper got dinged. I mean, you you had guys that that stepped up. You had a lot of guys that had been developed. I know the quarterback play wasn't great, but you had them ready to at least go in and and at least look at Chubba to try and make some plays. You got five wins out of Harvard. Now, the the next step, and I I believe this, I think Nebraska has really taken a hard, long look at uh, the quarterback spot, uh, clearly in the recruiting, but now you got to do it in coaching. And in Sats, Sats the offensive coordinator. Sat is going to stay as the offensive coordinator, but Sat is not going to probably work with the quarterbacks. That's my feel. And uh, you'll have a couple of heads put together here for the offensive game plan. I wouldn't be surprised if Donnie's got a, a large voice in the 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 run game design. And you've got some good uh, opportunity with uh, with with three minds putting a game plan together. You got you got to not have too many cooks in the kitchen, but you need to have uh, some options there. And if you get a quarterback coach that can really enhance quarterback play, I mean that's that's been as as much as anything. I mean you've had quarterback coaches here before, and and what's happened with it. You've, uh, I mean, Adrian got worse as his time went on. I think you could also argue the talent around him got worse. That's fair. But I'm saying Adrian, and Adrian, I'm not saying he was bad. I think Adrian's a hell of a good player. But I'm saying freshman Adrian versus junior year Adrian, despite the injuries. I mean, I, Mario, I love Super Mario getting a kick out of hearing him do media sessions, but uh, not, not, Great quarterback development. All right. Uh, same goes for where Nebraska was at uh, with the the Riley era. I mean, they, for whatever reason, didn't have great quarterback development, and it was uh, it was an issue. Are you so, munching on the cough drop I it, so it, generously gave you? It's it's about <laughs> gone. I had munching? to. I had to. I'm sorry to. to Crack in your ear. No, it's not that. Rob's going to bust through the door here and body slam me. Disrespectful. Forgive me. No, it's gone. <laughs> I'm it, it's about gone. You're not done, though. 20 minutes left. Open phones. Reaction to Riola saying yes to the Big Red. 489 1240. And now. And now. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. Thanks for spending time. It's Hail Varsity Radio. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Uh, more of your stream comments. We'll get to as many of you as possible, as many of you on the phone lines, too. Reaction to Riola flipping to Nebraska, making his commitment official. And a lot of time between now and Wednesday for Nebraska to keep on hunting. Uh, who's with us on the line? Marty's on the line. Marty, thanks for calling. Marty, welcome into Hale Varsity. Go ahead. 
Hey, guys, so great to hear your voices tonight. And I, you know what? I'm done with the, the impending sense of doom. <laughs> I am a Husker fan through and through, have always been, have been with this team, with this program, through all the growing pains. And you know what? Win, lose, or tie, I'm a Husker fan till I die. And this is a huge win. And I think we just need to soak it up, man. Just enjoy it. Um, I'm just so excited. I, I just, I don't know what else to say other than go Big Red. Marty, good stuff, and uh, awesome to hear from you. Thank you for calling us up. And, yeah, I mean, that's that's we've had more of the this is awesome, this is a big moment. Clearly, this is what you've needed, this shot in the arm. You got the AD, you got the head coach, you got the defensive coordinator, now you get the quarterback, and you get a returning offensive line. It's okay to think big things. Uh, Brandon checks in. Uh, and uh, lays out some thoughts here. If we can go two to four, two and four the next November, we might be in the top fifteen. Just saying, you start seven and zero. Oh, uh, that uh, three loss season in the Big Ten. I mean, it's going to be a new landscape, a new normal. Okay, your new normal in the Big Ten is. We were talking about the NFL playoff picture. And your division leaders typically, and I know they've added the game to it, but have been 12 and 4, 13 and 3, right? In some special seasons, you're 14 and 2. Well, everything's going to be more NFL modeled. And don't be surprised if someday you don't see uh, kind of your AFC, NFC, or your, your, your top four Big Ten teams play to get to a Big Ten championship. I mean, there's so much on the table. There's so much on the table. And you could have a situation where you, you have this subdivision of your, your top 60, 64 teams in college football with their own NIL and transfer rules. I mean, all that's on the horizon. What you do have right now are two options, three options, really. You go high school to recruit and develop. You go JUCO to, to, to fill a void. Or you go portal. And more and more programs that have been in the playoff, I think the the majority, six out of the last eight playoff teams, have gone to the playoff going portal at quarterback. But the ones that haven't found their guy as a freshman, watered him, groomed him, put some talent around him, and let him go play. And I think with Nebraska and Matt Rule, you need to have a difference maker at quarterback. And that's there's pressure – to perform, but I think Matt Rule's the kind of measured guy that is going to do his damnedest to make sure the kid's ready to perform. And I think that's also different. It's also different than, than past programs or past management putting a kid in before they're ready or putting a kid in when they're kind of ready and didn't do what's in the best interest of the kid. That's not going to happen in Lincoln and not going to happen – with with uh, with Dylan Raiola, he'll he'll have a good shot at winning the job. If he does win the job, it's because he's earned it and he's ready, and he's the best option at quarterback. And other programs have put true freshmen in there and uh, given the supporting staff to uh, to go thrive. If if Casey Thompson's an option, a veteran voice and presence in that locker room, good. I want that option if I'm a Nebraska football fan to not ruin things for my true freshman before he's ready. I would like Chubba Purdy. He's played some college football, more college football than he has in the past. But that's a big ask where he could go somewhere else as a graduate transfer. You have Danny Kalen, which is awesome. High school talent, kid that was good enough to go to Missouri, stuck solid to Nebraska despite the Riola situation. And so your quarterback room looks pretty good right now if you're Nebraska. You know you've got Dylan. You know you have Danny. You know you have Chubba for now. You know you have Harburg. And uh, maybe you have Casey Thompson. It's not McCord and Riola, but it is Dylan. Dylan Riola, top quarterback in the country that's coming in. And from a talent and a poise standpoint, you got to feel really good about him making some plays, and making some things happen next year for Nebraska. And whenever we're just talking about what type of player Nebraska just got, like the excitement's well-founded. 
I know people, all oh, recruiting rankings, they're bogus, who cares, doesn't matter if they get on campus. Quarterbacks are scouted and over-scouted, and Dylan Rell is a guy that's been in the spotlight since he was 15 years old. He's done it at multiple high schools in multiple different states, picked up offenses quickly. Every single place that he has gone, he has had massive amounts of success. 88 touchdowns to just 11 interceptions in his entire high school career with over 8,800 passing yards. Incredible stats. You, I mean, you look across the country, we're talking guys like in recent years, in terms of recruiting acumen, Trevor Lawrence, Arch Manning, Quinn Ewers, Justin Fields, the who's who of quarterbacks across the country. I mean, Dylan Rell is higher rated than Caleb Williams was coming out of high school. And I'm not saying mm-hmm. that the expectation is that Dylan Rell steps in right away and is better than Caleb Williams and what he did his freshman year at Oklahoma whenever he stepped in for, for Rattler, or he can do what Trevor Lawrence did his freshman year and take him to a college football playoff. I'm not saying that's what Dylan Rell can do. I think the supporting cast are a little bit different at those schools, but that is the type of quarterback we are talking that Nebraska just got program changing, the type of quarterback that puts Nebraska on the map of college football yet again right away. I mean, look, national people right now, are talking about Nebraska, talking about Nebraska in a way that they haven't talked about in over a decade in terms of what Nebraska is, what Nebraska can be. That's what Nebraska just got in terms of buzz and in terms of of national spotlight. You have to do something with it. You have to develop the kid. You have mm-hmm. to put pieces around him. But it's a lot easier to do so whenever you have that five-star, highly-rated quarterback that, I mean, is as close as you can get to generational that Nebraska's ever had. No, it's it's a big win. It's a big get. It's a day to celebrate. Uh, you know, Nebraska has the uh, the option to uh, not stop and, and, and keep going big, right? Dare John I say, John Cook says go big, dream big. Uh, Nebraska made it made it big time push and got a big time get today officially. And you know what? Peer recruiting is a thing. And who does Dylan bring with him on Wednesday? Five stars usually don't come alone. I've said that before. They don't. They don't. Come on this rodeo with me. And in his mindset in that Pete Thamel story is right on. I wanna I wanna be somebody who flips what Nebraska's been. It's a again, we talked about it. It's about the reckoning. It's about kind of making your mark, planting your flag, being a difference maker. You can be a difference maker at a lot of spots, but you can help a program get back up to speed and back up to prominence from where it's been. Uh, the uh, stairs that were taken by a Frazier and a Turner Gill were pretty monumental. Get by Oklahoma, go play for a national championship. Play on that level. Get by Colorado and Oklahoma and, and go play for a national championship and win and, and, a national championship. And Ryle has got a longer set of stairs in front of him that he has to go climb. But given where Nebraska has been He's got a couple decade, stories of stairs. But given where Nebraska has been in the past decade, this is, I think, the biggest recruiting win for Nebraska in their history. It is. It, immediately it puts Nebraska in that middle class of Big Ten football in a loaded league in 2024. And now. And now. Back to Hale Varsity Radio. One final time, you're invited to find the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play is where you can find Hale Varsity Radio. All Riola today with that announcement dropping around 420 or so. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, big thanks to you for checking in with us and listening and all your phone calls, your emails, and of course your comments on the stream. Hale Varsity YouTube channel, Hale Varsity Radio Twitter can rewatch that way. And uh, tell a friend about the show and to uh, give us a uh, rating, good, bad, or ugly. We'll take it. Happy for it. And uh, appreciate you doing so. 489-1240, still time to squeeze in. And you know what, Elijah? This has been a popular take by many national folks. And Joel Klatt weighs in, our friend from Big Ten Media Days. Massive get for Husker football. Can you imagine the Big Red getting... It really dialed in. It would be excellent for college football. Like every national talking head, as Joey screams woohoo in the stream section. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the world of college football wants Nebraska to be good again. Now, Abby checks in. I think Dylan's heart was always in Nebraska, but his potential 
But with his potential, he had to pursue all options that would develop his talent. Now with Coach Rule, he can have the development that he needs. Who are we going with? Brandon's on the line. Brandon, thanks for calling. Go for it. Hey, guys. Good talking to you. I enjoy your show every freaking day. Bud, appreciate you. What do you say? Hey, my big question is, I haven't heard much of it. I listen to you guys all the time. And uh, so now we bought the Ferrari. Mm. Where are we going to store it? My reference is to the offensive line. I guess I just haven't heard much about it. I guess maybe there's something going on that I haven't heard. I'm going to hang up with the you guys can answer. Thank yeah, you so I, I mean, you've got uh, four or five starters back uh, with guys that have started before. So... I think the the fact that that Uncle Dottie's coaching the guys that are supposed to protect and keep you safe, there's an emphasis on it. Who are we squeezing in? Tom here in just a second, but I'd also like to note that uh, a high-level quarterback can make their offensive line look better than they are as well. We've talked about that with running backs. A high-level quarterback that can feel a pocket and, and do what they'd like there. Get a running back and a quarterback and can, can, make an can help, line help one another. Right? Obviously, you have to have that offensive line, right? But a quarterback can... I, I like I like what they've got on the O line. Who's with us? Go to Tom. Tom, let's squeeze you in, bud. Here, thanks for calling. Hey, thanks. Uh, did that uh, defensive lineman that decommitted last week from Texas? Did he uh, go somewhere else, or, or is he still available? The, the 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 earlier phone call. No, no, he said decommitted from Texas. I no, I wouldn't know. Oh, the the one that was from Texas decommitted from Nebraska. Yes. Yes. Oh, as far as I know, it, it yeah, does USC. USC. Yes. Oh, USC? Yep. Okay. Carl, Carlon Jones was leading Ohio State, and I guess the, the word from on three was USC a little bit, uh, about 4 o'clock or so. Okay, well, hey, thank you. Uh-huh, appreciate it. Yeah, people love them some Carlon. Nebraska love them some Carlon first. As uh, we don't get to you today, we're not going to, sorry. Call us tomorrow. Plenty more on this. Call Nebra- Wednesday. Yeah, Nebraska's yeah. quarterback room. Tomorrow on the show, Matt Verzel. Verzel, check in and give us his take on the quarterback. Uh, maybe a Searles sighting. Mitch Sherman going to be with us. Thanks to you for checking in. Again, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, for Hale Varsity Radio. Get the podcast that way. Back tomorrow at 4. We're powered by Cornhead Lager.